And so, yeah, this is the this is where the Pope stayed for nine uh, six, 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 nine popes uh, in a row. In succession. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. <laughs> Morning. Today is our second full day in France. We're in Avignon. We are at we're at a food hall called Leha. There are a couple of places to eat. There are a couple of restaurants inside the food hall. The rest are just like stalls where you can get food to go or like cheeses and meats and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna grab lunch. So this is the situation. The chef's behind and then we just have a few tables here, and then we have a wine list, and then, yeah, really nice. This is a recommended spot, so we're hungry. Ready to eat? Yeah. So what will we get? We got duck, and then, I forget what this is called, but it's basically stuffed vegetables. I think it's, um, I think it's pork and stuffed in vegetables. So apparently the duck is his specialty. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, but that looks really good. Yeah. How do you? It's very tender. Looks really good. Fantastic lunch over there. I love that little cafe bistro that we ate at. It's just like a little one-man shop. It's just a chef. And apparently he's worked at a few Michelin restaurants, including in France, Germany, California. what do you think of lunch? It was very good. Yeah. It was the perfect portion size. For us to be able to go and get more desserts. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the market here. And now we're gonna find our way over to another pastry shop, a famous pastry shop here in Avignon. of La, Patr La Patisserie Verne. It's a um, sweets bakery. Yeah, dessert shop, I guess. Dessert shop. It's one of the few that you can actually sit down inside and um, eat. Apparently it's really big for a patisserie. So we're gonna grab dessert and a coffee before we head out and see the sights. But first, pass sanitaire. Means vaccine card. So what I got is a caramel type cake, and Melissa got the chocolate, chocolate version. She also got a cappuccino. It's very good. It's like a chocolate soak with like a chocolate wafer at the bottom. It's really good. <laughs> what about yours? Mine, I already started really good. As you all know, or may know, France requires a vaccine passport. They call it a pass sanitaire, but it's for like Europeans to use. So whatever, you know, vaccines they thought they could upload it to a system and it produces a QR code. And so when we arrived at customs, well, they asked for a Q QR code and we were like, we don't have one. And she was like, oh yeah, I forgot that. You're from the US, you guys don't have that. So she accepted our vaccine card. Everywhere else we've been, our hotel, all other restaurants, they have all recognized our vaccine card. Except here at this patisserie, Bernay, she asked for the passing of terror. We showed her her and she was like, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. I need the QR code. And we're like, it's not possible. Yeah. Like we, our cards aren't compatible with the QR code. Like, Even if we wanted to like get a QR code, it's not. Right, like, I looked available. into this yeah. um, and she was like, I'm sorry. Like I need it, I need to scan it. Unfortunately, I think 
we may encounter some people who are just not familiar with the compatibility issues, which is going to be a problem. Like when. <laughs> Yeah, and I think you know it's not. I don't think it's necessarily her fault. She was probably just instructed to check the QR code, and she was just doing her job. But you also—that's the problem with these things. It's yes. so complicated. So we almost were not able to eat inside. Eventually, she was like, "You know what? It's fine." But yeah, we almost weren't able to eat there due to this dang passing the tear. So there's something to be aware of when you're traveling uh, during these times. It can be just very confusing. Yeah. For everybody involved, including us and the people at the the stores and restaurants and stuff. So, but both of our desserts there were amazing. I yeah. highly recommend going there. Now we are going to head over to one of the main attractions here in Avignon, which is the Palais des Pop, which is apparently the palace of the popes that used to live in Avignon. So Avignon was the city of popes. Um, so we'll get some more history uh, when we go into the their museum part. So stay tuned for that. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but here's like a main square, and then we have seen all these support cars with bikes on them. I think it's a women's like pro cycling race. But yeah, like there's all everybody stage up back here. So we made it to the Palais des Pop. It's the most famous attraction here. This is like the symbol of Avignon. Apparently there's a line to get in, so yeah, we're gonna get in, but it, yeah, we just walked up here and it looks amazing. Let's go check out the inside. There's a lot of history inside. Apparently you, you get like a little small iPad that you can use for like the tour, so. Thankfully, we were able to bypass the big line outside by buying our ticket on our phone. And it was for three o'clock, but they let us in early. So thankful for that. So that's a tip. If you have a big line and they're able to buy tickets online, you can try to do it on your phone. So we got these like Android tablets that you can, has a little headset that you can listen to. My review of the palace so far is, it's interesting inside, right? So this is the palace inside and we're now outside in the garden area. So you can get the ticket that includes the gardens. Um, so we got everything in like 17 euros. But apparently there were nine popes that made Avignon home. Uh, so in the 14th century, so like 1330s, 1340s, somewhere in there, there was a French pope that was elected. So I guess the French pope decided that he wanted Avignon to be his home, and so yeah, this is the this is where the Pope stayed for nine uh, six, 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 nine popes uh, in a row. In succession. That's what I was trying to say. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, I mean the histo pad, this thing is cool and everything, and gives you an audio guide, but it's hard to hold because it's big, so you have to hold it. I'd rather just have an audio guide, like a traditional audio guide that you can just like slip in your pocket and then you can just move on because this one you literally have to hold the whole time. Right. So that's one. I wish they would have uh, put it on a lanyard so you could just like hang it on your neck. I think there used to be. You can raise it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they took out the lanyard, maybe for COVID. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Did you learn any lessons? No you, lessons. You didn't learn any lessons? No. <laughs> But apparently one of the rooms in here is was one of the financiers for the Pope for like the whole papacy or papacy. And so they found actually like coins and a lot of treasures in one of these rooms, like below the one of the below basically the floor. Um, and they only found it in 1985. See, here's the problem, right? I have this thing and I'm now I have a camera, like, and then these headphones don't even work and they don't stay on your head. And this fucking thing is just ridiculous. <laughs> Literally about to throw this thing in there fucking garden.
This is the huge reception hall where they had like all their feasts and stuff. Pretty impressive. I will say the palace is quite impressive. And a lot of the, well, a few of the beams and the ceilings are still the original. You can't film in the Pope's like quarters because it still had all the frescoes on the walls and the ceilings and everything. That was really cool. And then all these halls are huge. Like, I mean, in by today's standards, they're, hu they're huge. I just can't imagine what it must have felt like back in the day when people's houses were really small and everything. This must have felt like really, really grand. Really cool place to visit, uh, really big. All right, we just got done visiting the Palais de la Pop. I don't think it's de la Pop. Oh. Palais de Pop. Oh, so we just finished visiting the Palais de Pop. It definitely was very interesting, a lot of history. It dates back to obviously the 1400s, no 1300s, 14th century. Do I wish the histogram or histopad would have been a better setup? Yes, but I shouldn't let that color my impression of the palace here. It really was impressive, don't you think? Yeah, one thing to keep in mind, it is very hot in there. Mm -hmm. And with a mask on, you just it feel is, like you're- I, I can't do You that. just feel like you're dying. Yeah, especially if you're climbing stairs and walking around and everything. Yeah, there's no air movement. There's no airflow in there. So I don't know how the Pope <laughs> and their cardinals and everyone lived in there. Especially with like their big their robes, robes and, and the papal, all that stuff. But yeah, something to keep in mind. Definitely a very cool place to visit. Obviously when you're here in Avignon, definitely go check it out. It is very impressive. We're at the Pont de Benezé, also known as Pont de Avignon. It is the bridge um, that goes over the Rhone River, but only part of it is still standing today. So you can walk on top of it. Apparently the best viewpoint is not obviously from on top of it. It's from like gardens that overlook it. So we're gonna check it out and then we'll go to the better viewpoint later. I think the better viewpoint is just like over there. There's a garden up there somewhere. Uh, okay. Now on top of the bridge, the viewpoint of the bridge that's really nice is that garden up there. It's pretty cool that you can actually go on the bridge. So, and then they do provide an audio guide, but it's a much better audio guide. It's not a histopad. It's not a huge thing. Like you can hold it in your hand, it's light. So yeah, pretty cool. So this is the Rhone River. Yeah, so what happened was they built this bridge on the, I guess the narrowest part of the bridge because the Rhone River is notoriously known for flooding. But unfortunately, even though they built it on the narrowest part of the river, the bridge started as a wooden bridge initially, and then there was a stone bridge, but then it used to span 950 meters across the, to the other side. But then uh, over the years, uh, more than half of it has eroded away, and this is what's remaining now. Was that this Rhone River used to separate the Frankish Empire? France and the Germanic Kingdom, or vice versa, Ger Germany basically, France and Germany. This used to be the border between the two, and so this area was always it, disputed, mm. but finally during some revolution, the Rhone River became part of France. So we reached the end of the bridge here, and so this used to be going across over there. Supposedly, there was a total of 12 arches, and so only four arches remain, so I'm not sure how far it went that way. But then, yeah, this is a good view of the city, the old city back this way. Pont de Avignon, excellent, pretty good, especially because there's quite a bit of wind blowing, so it's not so hot. So yeah, pretty good. It's definitely a must-see attraction here in Avignon. Just go ahead and buy the, the ticket, including the palace and the bridge. That way you save a few euro. We're at Cardin de Don, and it's a garden overlooking the Pont d'Avignon. If you want the best photos of the bridge, it's from up here because you can actually see the bridge as opposed to being on top of it. The entrance is kind of hard to find. Uh, but you walk along the river until you see 
an unmarked staircase that goes up and it brings you up here. It's hot today though. It is hot. Definitely make your way up to the Dom's garden or Hardin because you can get a really good view of the, not only the bridge, but then on the backside of the garden, you can come back and see the palace from the backside, which is really cool. All right, it's getting kind of late in the day. It's about almost five o'clock. We've been here for a little over five hours. So we're gonna say bye to Avignon, but then we're not done for the day. We're gonna get a quick snack. Hopefully we can get a smoothie. And then we're actually going to head to a place called Pont de Garde, which is a Roman aqueduct. So let's head over there and see you in a bit.